And you've just heard This Is The Start, the lead track from the new EP from Andrew Eaton-Lewis, The Stages. I'm so pleased to welcome back to the show Andrew himself. Hello, Andrew. Hello, thank you for having me. So tell us about the new EP and This Is The Start in particular. Oh, well, I suppose let's start with This Is The Start. <laughs> it was a song I recorded last year um, at We Studio on the Isle of Lewis with um, a fantastic producer and singer-songwriter called Scott C. Park, who I think you've played on your show before. Yeah, haven't um, you? Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I suppose it's a song about surviving um, being a teenager or surviving being young and all that, and all the kind of trials of that which is not something I have any kind of recent experience of, but um, it was sort of on my mind because my uh, youngest daughter um, uh, turned 11 recently and she's gonna be off to high school um, yeah. soon. And so I was, we've sort of been thinking a lot about, are we quite ready to throw our child into that bear pit um, and and is she gonna be okay? And so so that was, I mean, and, and the song isn't really about her exactly because you know her teenage experience is going to be vastly different to mine because being yeah. a teenager now is all you know the terror of social media and the internet and uh, and all that which has changed being a young person entirely but um but yeah I, I think I, I wanted to write something about uh youth and hope and resilience and that possibly partly came from the fact that I'd just spent about two years writing songs um uh with people living with dementia so you know i was, I was very much focusing on that yeah. sort of stage of life experience and i wanted to write something about this kind of the other the other end <laughs> and uh, um, the idea of starting i was i said i was reading a band camp page about the, the the ep and you said you're not sure whether this is a start or whether it's just a kind of you know reflection on as you say the past have you thought yeah, well, about that it's it's quite ironic maybe to be releasing a song called This Is the Start where you have no way you know where you have no idea what it's the start of or whether it's the start of anything really. I mean I mean I basically I woke up on the first of January this year and I kind of kind of you know processing where I was in my life and what what, what I want to do this year as 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 people often do as the new year turns. And at that point um uh, basically, I mean, there was a sort of clearing out of the cupboards going on with this EP. I mean, I, I, I had one song, and this is the start, which I recorded last year, which I'm really pleased with. I think it's one of the best things I've done for a long time. It's very different from what I've done for a long time. Um, and I also had these three other songs, which I'd done very rough demo recordings of, and I realised I didn't really like any of them. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a sort of perverse thing to say since I'm about to release them, but um, I just, you know, looking back on them, I understand why I wrote them. That um, I just had, shall we say, a significant birthday, and I was um, kind of reflecting on that, and in a in a in sort of slightly stressed sort of way, and and um, and so, so yeah, it's it's these these songs are sort of all about turning fifty in a in a different way, and they're not particularly hopeful about that experience <laughs> and I think I, I needed to get them off my chest at a certain point last year and I, and I remember at the time thinking oh these are really good um, and then looking back on them a few months later I thought mm, I don't know is anyone going to relate to this is, that, is this is this really what I is this really what I want to be putting out into the world right now um, so so yeah um, so I wasn't sure what to do with them if anything um, but I didn't but I really wanted to put this as a start out because yeah. I really like that. And so what I've ended up doing is, is like I say, kind of clearing out the cupboards at the start of a new year and saying, look, this is, this is what, this is a thing that I'm doing, which I really like. This is, these are some other things which I have been working on. I'm not really sure what they are, but you know, take them for the, you know, take what you will from them. And yeah, we'll see. But, but I sort of feel that by doing that, I've sort of got myself out of a, out of a place where I felt slightly creatively stuck. I can kind of put that right. all to start to one side now and maybe some glorious new future of making different kinds of music will emerge or maybe i'll just stop it's interesting <laughs> it almost know. sounds like the, the almost sounds like the old idea of having the single on on the b-side you have you know rarities or you know that kind of thing uh, uh, that, that, you know that you've, you've put on there that uh you know fans will devour yeah well hopefully i mean i mean all of those three songs i was listening to and thinking yeah b-sides yeah, <laughs> and in terms of inspiration uh, behind the EP, 
And maybe a lot of your work, you mentioned again on Bandcamp, the importance of your friend, John Stahl. Could you talk oh. a little bit about that? Well, no, it doesn't much to do with the artwork as anything else, really. I mean, I when I was um, sort of recording early demos last year, I had this idea in my head that I was going to write an album called the, the Stages, right? About the kind of different stages of life. But that, specifically, the inspiration for that was the fact that um, so, so, so John Stahl um, is a name that many people in Scotland would know. He was um, a, 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 a very wonderful actor in a, a stage and screen. I mean, he was. Um, he's uh, probably best known for, for being Game of Thrones for a while, um, uh, but uh, he was in he was in the High Road for a long time as well. And he, but he's done lots of um, lots of different things, lots of big theatre productions. He did um, he was in Danny Boyle's production of um, Frankenstein, Frankenstein stage production. Um, but he'd been living for a long time on the Isle of Lewis and and, and having a kind of uh, a, a acting career from then. He from there he'd. Uh, he, when he wasn't working, he'd be on Lewis, um, uh, living in a village near me, and then he'd go off and uh, and do his thing. And so I got to know him um, uh, quite well, um, uh, and we did a uh, did a few things together. I mean, he, I, I was because one of the other things I'm doing is I as I I, I, I do uh, theatre producing sometimes, and um, he uh, uh, did a theatre project with me um, uh, back in 2018. But then um, a couple of years ago, we got the terrible news that he had a, a, a brain tumor. And um, then within a year, he was, um, he was gone. And mm -hmm. it, was, it was very quick, very sudden and, and very awful. And um, yeah, and he's someone we all miss very much. He was very, I mean, he was such a fantastic part of the, of the community here as well. I mean, he used to do like the, um, the pantomimes at the <laughs> at, at Uri community center here and um and he would uh he was just kind of an inspirational um figure um on the island and then when um and, and in fact um one of the la in fact the last thing he did as an actor was um a video for uh, a song i'd made called valhalla and um this had happened i mean this came about i mean after he became ill we would, you know, we would ask John and his partner, Jane, well, you know, what can we do? Is there anything we can do to help? And um, the, the thing that Jane said to us was, well, he wants to keep busy. He wants to keep doing things. He wants to keep working. And, and you know, he wasn't really able to do professional work at, at that time because he was losing his memory. And then he was sort of kind of in the early stages of, of, of that. Um, but yeah, so I suggested, would he like to do a music video? And the idea that he was going to play, he was going to play this Viking um, this very kind of imposing Viking figure, like kind of striding around the um, uh, the Lewis landscape, and um, and ultimately he became too ill to do that, right. and we almost gave up on the idea completely. And but then one day, we just went to his uh, went to his house with, and we just took a camera with us, having, um, uh, to film equipment with us, having no um, expectations really of of anything. But um, but we yeah we filmed him for a little while and. Um, and that became uh, the music video, and and the strange thing is, you can really you could really see him kind of responding to the camera, even though he was in, you know he was really I mean he, this was one week before he died, yeah, wow. uh, as it turned out, um, but and he was mostly confined to a chair, um, but you could when there was something remarkable happened when the camera went on, he would he, he would kind of light up, he would he, his body language would change and you could you could tell he was still performing for the camera because that, because that was his passion you know he wanted to he, he he acted and he took that very very seriously and what he wanted still wanted to do that even right at the end and um so yeah there's this uh there's this um uh a video but where the where when the stages comes in is that when um john died um i inherited his shoes <laughs> he had about um uh, over a dozen pair pairs of shoes which were which might happen to be my size and and Jane um, um, uh, gave them to me, and they're all very very different shoes, right. and it's like he's diff playing a different character with every pair of shoes that he owned, which is a <laughs> lovely thing. That um, and so my idea was I was going to make this album with every song was inspired by a different pair of um, John's shoes, and who knows, I may end up, still end up doing that. But one of the demos on this EP, which is called "The Stages," is sort of a little bit inspired by by John and yeah. himself, and the artwork. For yeah, the, I'm going to uh, say the artwork's got a pair of shoes. That's a pair of John's, is it? That is a pair of John's shoes. Yeah, I've, I've used his shoes a couple of times on um, on uh, different bits of artwork, and and will probably continue to do so. 
I'm sure there's a quote from a, a well-known actor that they start with the shoes when they come across a character, but I can't remember if that's true or not. It's a lovely idea. And you, you've mentioned um, a Dyla Lewis a couple of times, and Scott C. Park's also someone from that part of the world as well, isn't it? Mm. And there seems to, it seems to me that there's a really healthy music scene in Lewis at the moment. There has been for a while. There's, you know, historically there's been bands who from there, but at the moment there seems to be a lot going on. Is that would you agree with that? Oh God, yeah. I mean, we've got two you know, very substantial big recording studios. So you've got We Studio and we've got Black Bay over the other side of the island. We've got, you know, We Studio Records, um, which has grown out of We Studio, um, which is most kind of well-known, I guess, for Pete and Diesel, who've been just this kind of absolute phenomenon in, in, yeah. in the recent few years. But but on the on the back of that, um, uh, uh, Keith from We Studio has been signing lots of um, other people. And uh, of course, uh, my own album came out on, on, on We Studio. Um, and there's, um, there's an, uh, there was another label, it's kind of second indie label that was going for We Wild. I don't know if it's still going, but, but Charlie from um, Astrid um, started up a thing called No Big Deal a couple of years yeah. ago. Um, so to have, you know, two big recording studios and two indie labels on a, in a place of science, that's quite uh, remarkable. And We Studio in particular has been an incredible resource for musicians for years now. I mean, and, 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 and I think you can probably credit Keith uh, from We Studio with a lot of the kind of development of the, of the music scene here because it's been this great resource for local musicians. Um, uh, but, um, but yeah, I mean, Pete and Diesel in particular has just been... <laughs> It's just kind of extraordinary what they've achieved in the in, in the last two or three years. And do you get people coming to the studios from elsewhere? Because I would imagine, you know, you've got the, the beautiful place you are as well, and it's away from a lot of the distractions of big cities or towns. Oh god, yeah. I mean, it's that. I mean, it's a beautiful place to record. I mean, uh, I mean, Black Bay has always been a beautiful place to record. I mean, um, it, it's it's right out on a but part of the island called Burner, and it's right on the beach. So it's it's just it's just a gorgeous place to be. And um, We Studio used to be in a little, you know, a tiny, um, a, a tiny place in the middle of town. Hence the name. It's now sort of ironically named because it's in this you know, um, big building, which was uh, formerly a, a coal center, I think. Um, but that's again, it's a view of the sea. It's um, out in a very beautiful part of the island with a, a lighthouse close by. So so bands will come up and they'll do a kind of wee tour of the island while they're here so it's a very yeah it's a very peaceful place to record and going back to your solo stuff how do you approach do you approach that differently to when you make music with swimmer one or even other you know collaborations i approach it differently oh gosh i don't know i've been i've sort of been doing solo stuff for such a long time that i've, I've forgotten now but um i'm i'm sort of and you, you know I, I said it with this i was at this crossroads maybe and and, and not knowing whether i'm going to continue or not I'm kind of really leaning towards kind of collaborating with people again. I, I, I sort of feel like my solo stuff has maybe run its road and I'm starting to sort of repeat myself and go back to familiar themes. And I don't know if I have anything more to say, to be honest. But I mean, one of the great joys of um, the past couple of years has, has fun enough been this music I've been making with people living with dementia. Yeah, which is a very collaborative process in, in, in every case. You know, are these, there is, these are songs Songs which emerge from conversations um, with with somebody about their whole life and about um, uh, about what, what uh, the impact that dementia has had on them and and um, a lot of the the songs are quite often about memory and about going back to childhood and um, and that's been that's been a really lovely positive experience because I'm very much you know when I'm writing songs for myself I'm just kind of indulging my ego really but but when, when you're writing songs in that sort of situation you're 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 working in the service of some somebody else and in somebody else's life and and that's uh and that has been in several cases really powerful thing for them because uh, sure. I mean, because most of the people i'm working with have not written songs before and they are putting something down you know they're they're they're, they're, they're preserving something of their life for the, for themselves to kind of help their memory of it but also for their family so and and also I'm and I'm doing sort of a bit more um well I mean this this is a different kind of thing but I'm, a, another thing I'm doing at the moment is uh, uh through the mentoring program at Atlanta the Arts Center here I'm I'm working with a, a songwriter called um, Martin Flett in fact I'm in the studio with him on on Friday and um he is uh he's 68 um he wrote one song in 1983 I think 
and then, and then didn't write anything else for years and years. And then suddenly had this flood of creativity during lockdown and has since written 90 songs. Right. And um, so we're going to, uh, so he is determined now to, to, to make a, a solo album for the, for, for the first time when we're in the studio on, on Friday. So I'm actually, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure if this really answers your question or not, but I'm increasingly I'm finding working with other people um, more rewarding than just writing um, and recording songs for myself. So, when, I mean, for instance, when you were working with Scott uh, on a the, the new single, it, that mm. ought to be collaborative. I mean, you've got your own experience going back for a while about how the, you want to work. And is that yeah. a, a, something which kind of revives you in a way to work with someone who's new and, and has maybe got new ideas? Oh god, yeah. I mean, even even um, recording uh, the tourism album, my album for We Studio Records, yeah. which was kind of me and a piano, which is what I'd been doing for a long time before that. But just having different ears, you know, it's it's it's, it's remarkable how, how working with a different. I mean, Hamish from Summer One has been amazing to work with over, over over the years. But it was it was a funny thing making similar sort of music, but with with, with Keith at We Studio for the first time. You would hear it in a different way, and he could, because he would hear it in a different way, and he was doing things sonically with it, which I just never would have thought of. And particularly with Scott, who's become an absolute joy to collaborate with over the past um, uh, kind of year and a half or so. I mean, um, Scott and I did um, a, a live show last year called uh, called David Bowie in Space. Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> with um, with uh, uh, Josie Duncan and, and Michael McGovern, um, which we're hoping to revive when we did it at Atlanta. And it, 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 I mean, it almost sold out. It did really well. Which was um, which was we did um, uh, about ten of David Bowie's space songs, um, and we did our own arrangements of them. So, and and so rather than put a big band together, we we spent a lot of time in the studio, kind of making um, quite electronic in some, in some cases, but but. Uh, we we would be uh, uh, doing very very different arrangements for for uh, every single one of these, so they, they didn't really sound like the original Bowie songs at all. Right. And that was such fun to do because we kind of clicked and we 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 came up with all these, all these ideas together and um, came up with stuff which I would never have thought of on my own, and, and perhaps things that Scott wouldn't have thought of when he did. Yeah, well, that's interesting. And is that so? Are you at a stage, you said right at the beginning, you're not sure whether this is the start or whether it's even the end, perhaps, but is the next step perhaps further collaboration, whether it's continuing, uh, you know, what you're doing, working with people with dementia or with other musicians, is is that still all up in the air? It is completely up in the air at the moment. I mean, I like, like I say, I don't have any other songs. I mean, I've cleared out the cupboards now. I haven't. I mean, I mean, my my rate of productivity has kind of steadily been slowing down over the years. I used to write you know, hundreds of songs. I, I'm down to like one every six months or something. <laughs> so, um, so uh, yeah. So I don't really have anything else that I can do anything with. Um, uh, but you know, but I, I mean, for example, I was. Very, had a sort of very idle conversation with um, uh, Sean Harrison, a, a musician here, about maybe collaborating um, uh, at some point. So that might happen. Um, and obviously, I'm, I'm sort of working with with Martin on his album. So I will be doing things. I'm just not very sure what they are at the moment. It's not quite exciting in a way that you don't have anything now on the back burner or from the old catalogue, or however you might like to call it, in the cupboard. And that you can go, well, whatever I do now is new. Yeah, well, yeah. perhaps I've reached an age where it doesn't matter so much. You know, I mean, when I was much younger, I had I was sort of heavily invested in the idea of myself as a musician and 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 a, and a songwriter, and I really wanted that to work. And I mean, it did. You know, it did to an extent. Um, but I I don't I don't feel like my happiness or my you know my creator's soul sort of depends on it. You know, I, I have many other things in my life that um, keep me occupied and, and sort of keep me fulfilled. If I never wrote a song again, I wouldn't be feeling terribly sad about it. It would be fine. <laughs> but, but, you know, I'd like to think I would. But I mean, I, I mean, I remember I put out an album in 2019 called After All of the Days We Will Disappear. And, and that was a sort of clearing out of the cupboards at that point, because I, I, I was about to move to the Isle of Lewis I wasn't sure if I had any more songs in me. It was really just, this is what, this is, I mean, it was a mix of uh, uh, new versions of um, songs by my old band, Swimmer One, yeah. 
revived versions of things I'd done earlier, but improved and a couple of new things. But it was kind of a rag bag and a sort of best of type thing. And and I thought that was going to be it. I, I thought that was going to be my my last album. And then I met Keith at Wee Studio and he was excited about what I was doing and another one came out. So you just never know. It's like these bands who say, yes, this is our final tour. <laughs> and then they're, 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 there they are again, like five years later. Uh, it, like Elton John on his final fifth final tour at the moment. That's the thing. Oh, the one I always think of is Aha, who I went to see on their farewell tour. And I remember it being a very emotional occasion, this band that, I mean, that was, uh, Hunting High and Low was by Aha was the first album I ever bought when I was yeah, a kid. Back, back in and <laughs> and, um, I, and yeah, so I went to their farewell tour at the SECC in Glasgow and it was a very emotional occasion. And then I heard like three years later, it didn't, well, maybe it was more than that, but it didn't seem like that long later that they were getting together again doing another tour. And I thought, I felt kind of cheated, actually. It felt like something had been taken away from me. Yeah, I can understand that. Well, Andrew, I for one hope there is new songs for you from you in the future. Thank you, Alistair. Um, well, I will let you know. Yes, no, absolutely. And anything that you're involved in, do drop us a line and let us know about it. Thanks very much for taking the time to talk to me. Always a pleasure catching up. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And, and I, I always very much appreciate your support. Thank you. And this is Andrew Eaton-Lewis and a guide to the Western Isles. <laughs>